William Shearer was a radio reporter for CBS News. We join his story as he stands in a clearing in the forest of Compiègne next to the railroad car where the ceremony will take place. Hitler and his entourage arrive just moments before the ceremony. The time is now 3.18 p.m. Hitler's personal flag is run up on a small standard in the center of the opening. Also in the center is a great granite block which stands some three feet above the ground. Hitler, followed by the others, walks slowly over to it, steps up, and reads the inscription engraved in great high letters on that block. It says, Here on the 11th of November 1918 succumbed the criminal pride of the German Empire, vanquished by the free peoples which it tried to enslave. Hitler reads it, and Goring reads it. They all read it, standing there in the June sun and the silence. I look for the expression on Hitler's face. I am but fifty yards from him and see him through my glasses as though he were directly in front of me. I have seen that face many times at the great moments of his life, but today it is a fire with scorn, anger, hate, revenge, triumph. He steps off the monument and contrives to make even this gesture a masterpiece of contempt. He glances back at it, contemptuous, angry. Angry, you almost feel, because he cannot wipe out the awful, provoking lettering with one sweep of his high Prussian boot. He glances slowly around the clearing, and now, as his eyes meet ours, you grasp the depth of his hatred. But there is triumph there, too. Revengeful, triumphant hate. Suddenly, as though his face were not giving quite complete expression to his feelings, he throws his whole body into harmony with his mood. He swiftly snaps his hands on his hips, arches his shoulders, plants his feet wide apart. It is a magnificent gesture of defiance, of burning contempt for this place now in all that it has stood for in the twenty-two years since it witnessed the humbling of the German Empire. It is now 3.23 p.m., and the Germans stride over to the armistice car. For a moment or two they stand in the sunlight outside the car, chatting. Then Hitler steps up into the car, followed by the others. We can see nicely through the car windows. Hitler takes the place occupied by martial folk when the 1918 armistice terms were signed, the others spread themselves around him. Four chairs on the opposite side of the table from Hitler remain empty. The French have not yet appeared, but we do not wait long. Exactly at 3.30 p.m., they alight from a car. They have flown up from Bordeaux to a nearby landing field. Then they walk down the avenue flanked by three German officers. We see them now as they come into the sunlight of the clearing. It is a grave hour in the life of France. The Frenchmen keep their eyes straight ahead. Their faces are solemn, drawn. They are the picture of tragic dignity. They walk stiffly to the car, where they are met by two German officers, Lieutenant General Tippelskirch, Quartermaster General, and Colonel Thomas, Chief of the Führer's Headquarters. The Germans salute. The French salute. The atmosphere is what Europeans call correct. There are salutes, but no handshakes. Now we get our picture through the dusty windows of that old wagon-lit car. Hitler and the other German leaders rise as the French enter the drawing room. Hitler gives the Nazi salute, the arm raised. Ribbentrop and Hess do the same. I cannot see Monsieur Noel to notice whether he salutes or not. Hitler, as far as we can see through the windows, does not say a word to the French or to anybody else. He nods to General Keitel at his side. We see General Keitel adjusting his papers. Then he starts to read. He is reading the preamble to the German armistice terms. The French sit there with marble-like faces and listen intently. Hitler and Goring glance at the green tabletop. The reading of the preamble lasts but a few minutes. Hitler, we soon observe, has no intention of remaining very long, of listening to the reading of the armistice terms themselves. At 3.42 p.m., 12 minutes after the French arrive, we see Hitler stand up, salute stiffly, and then stride out of the drawing room, followed by Goring, Braukic, Raider, Hess, and Ribbentrop. The French, like figures of stone, remain at the green-topped table. General Keitel remains with them. He starts to read them the detailed conditions of the armistice. Hitler and his aides stride down the avenue towards the Alsace-Lorraine monument, where their cars are waiting. As they pass the Guard of Honor, the German band strikes up the two national anthems, Deutschland, Deutschland über alles, and the Horst Vessel song. The whole ceremony in which Hitler has reached a new pinnacle in his meteoric career, and Germany avenged the 1918 defeat is over in a quarter of an hour. 